Today, I'm going to show you how to get some crazy boost numbers and get on those leaderboards. Okay, to be a bit more specific, we're going to cover the basic fundamentals of boosting. We're going to cover how to boost as a white hive, a blue hive, and a red hive. I post weekly now, by the way, so no more random upload schedule. To help support this weekly upload schedule, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to start with the basics of boosting on uh, like what to do and how and the things you'll need. Okay, to start off, you're gonna need loaded dice. Loaded dice will give you three random fields with 300% pollen for 15 minutes. A really neat thing is that the dice has a higher chance to give you the boost of the field that you are standing in. Like if I'm standing in sunflower, it's more likely to give me a sunflower boost. So that's pretty nifty. Of course, you can't have loaded dice without glitter. So a lot of people tend to mess this up for some odd reason. And somehow people don't know this still, but if you glitter the field first, like let's say I want to boost in spider field, I'm going to glitter the field, right? So now the field has a spider field boost and I wait a couple of seconds. And then if I use my dice, let's say these field dice are loaded dice. I use my dice and I try to get spider field. Hang on a second. Okay. That took a little while, but look at that. See now my spider field boost is two times. The 15 minutes are refreshed and my glitter has a 14 minute and 20 second cooldown on it. So that means, let's say this is a four times booster right now. In 14 minutes and 20 seconds, I can refresh that 15 minutes. So technically speaking, I've extended it to 30 minutes of boost time. So use your glitter, wait a couple of seconds, loaded dice, and then glitter again as soon as you can. Another thing you're going to want is the super smoothie, which can be crafted in the blender here. The super smoothie will give you some insane benefits. Grants the improved boosts of many consumer items combined for 20 minutes aka super smoothie is the be all end all of consumable items in b game another thing you're gonna want when boosting are winds right here inside this beautiful wind shrine right here but what winds do which i'm gonna make an example and donate something really simple like let's say a gold egg i donate a gold egg to the wind shrine eggs are amazing for donations that and purple potions but i donate a gold egg and it gives me a bunch of these things as you can see it provides instant conversion for that field and it provides a pollen buff for that field like this spider field now has 46 percent instant conversion in it so when i'm standing in here 46 percent of the pollen that i gather straight from the spider field is instantly converted that and i get 65 percent more overall pollen from the spider field i've boosted windless before and still made near 100 trillion which for white hive i could do a lot better but i'm very new to white hive boosting another thing you're going to want for boosting is a fuzzy hive what is a fuzzy hive it is an alternate account that you have in the server here that is just jam-packed with fuzzy bees in its hive to provide you pollination in the field so like let's say if i want to boost in dandelion field these tiny little flowers aren't gonna do much for me with the fuzzy account these flowers can instantly be turned into the like star flower i guess you call them which gives you a crap ton more pollen overall another thing you're gonna want to make sure is with your alt accounts in the server with you or your friends with you be sure you all place your sprinklers in the field because the flowers deteriorate incredibly quickly when you're boosting see it like this boom would you look at that sprinkler already fixing the flowers so i don't have to worry about it now i'm sure you already know this but you're going to want to have gumdrops being dropped during your boost to give you that extra goo because goo is just pretty much extra honey so having gumdrop droppers is super handy and if you have gummy star you need to constantly be dropping gumdrops to activate it so hopefully that's already known stingers stingers are incredibly handy if you have star saw if you don't have star saw you don't need stingers for boosting but as you can see i have star saw so i'm going to want to use stingers during my boost so i can have star saw converting my backpack and gathering some extra pollen collecting tokens all that good stuff now something that i am currently lacking apart from brain cells and honey is nectars nectars can be incredibly handy for boosting your overall pollen gathering your stats like your convert rate your b ability pollen some of these give you yeah b ability rate nectars just overall boost your multipliers greatly which gives you a huge advantage when boosting and nectars are pretty much required to boost these days you need max nectars all five all times i mean you can technically boost with four but it has to be a very specific four but having five just makes it so much better trust me it's worth it to get all five ensure they are maxed out by the way something optional for red and white hives is having a high balloon blessing which currently i don't have a high balloon blessing but it's for the extra capacity mainly because as a white hive 
you need some capacity because you don't want your bag to constantly explode. And same thing goes for Red Hive, even though you can convert consistently, having that bigger backpack does have a bit of, it gives you a bit more leeway when it comes to converting. However, for Blue, having a high balloon blessing is pretty much necessary. Well, no, actually, yes, it, it is necessary. Get a high balloon blessing because for Blue, your entire boost is based off of Honey at Hive and having a very high capacity for your balloons and for your just general backpack capacity. Now, here's something that's optional in general, and that is having the Guiding Star because the Guiding Star will provide you with an extra pollen multiplier and it will provide you with an extra capacity multiplier, which is pretty useful. Also, it does pollinate the field just a little bit, so your fuzzy hive won't be the only thing that's pollinating the field. Having Guiding Star is pretty helpful, but it is an optional thing. By the way, you'd need an alt account to summon the Guiding Star. Don't get Guiding Star on your main. That's practically useless, unless you're a blue hive. A fat necessity that people often undermine is cloud vials. Cloud vials pop little clouds in your field that you can walk under for a second, and you get a cloud boost, which gives you pollen, like just flat out pollen, 50% pollen when you have cloud boost plus enabled. Regular cloud boost only gives you 25%, but that's still a lot of pollen and that's base pollen. So that's multiplied by your marks and stuff and your bear morph and all that. And now here's a small thing to have, but it does help a little bit. Back then, this used to be a huge part of boosting, but jelly beans, if you throw jelly beans at your friends and your friends pick up your jelly beans, you get this thing called the jelly bean sharing buff. And that jelly bean sharing buff gives you multiple different boosts to your stats. And also the jelly beans themselves do provide an extra boost to your stats. Now, something that is rather minor are coconuts. You don't exactly need them, but coconuts are pretty helpful because they help you instantly convert some stuff out of your bag and coconuts also help you move faster, which is something that is prioritized when you are a white or a red hive. So having those coconuts there to help you get some speed are pretty helpful. That just about covers it for the basics. Now let's talk about some more hive specific boosting. First, we're gonna talk about how to boost as a white hive because a lot of people are very lost when it comes to learning how to boost as a white hive. I'm going to clear this all up for you guys. Okay, to begin when boosting as a white hive, you're going to constantly be dropping gumdrops, mainly so you can get goo on the field, get this gummy ball multiplier up, and to also give you that chance of getting a gummy star. Now, as a white hive, where does most of your honey come from? Well, that's a very simple answer. It takes us back to the gummy star. Again, you're going to want to grow your gummy stars as large as possible. Get the number as high as you can because when that gummy star pops and drops a bunch of honey tokens on the field, pick up all those honey tokens. Those honey tokens will be the equivalent of however big your gummy star was. So growing your gummy star to enormous sizes can help you get more honey from your honey tokens, and that's multiplied by your honey from tokens stat. Um, a lot of people don't even know that stat exists, I don't think. Now, how do you grow your gummy star? Growing your gummy star is pretty simple, and that's where triangulates come in. So I'm stretching my triangulates really fat and really wide, and so it collects a lot of pollen. Well, in the process of those triangulates collecting a lot of pollen, they are also collecting a lot of goo, and goo is what you need to grow gummy stars. You are also going to need to stay in your marks as much as you possibly can. Never leave them, because these marks give you two and a half times pollen, which is an insane amount of pollen, and you need that pollen, otherwise your gummy star, when you use these triangulates, will not grow at all. It will be really sucky. Only leave your marks when you're trying to activate a precise B ability to get a precise mark like right here so I had to leave my marks to hit that target so I could just have this precise mark here gives me some extra super crit chance and critical chance which is incredibly helpful also during your gummy stars you're going to want to make sure you have baby love active and you're going to want to make sure you have bear morph active because those two make your gummy stars way bigger and without them your gummy stars are tiny oftentimes this is a problem because it heavily relies on RNG another thing you're going to want to do to help grow your big fat gummy stars is gummy baller this is a rather interesting mechanic that most people don't understand. Gummy baller is activated once you get this thing right here, the gummy ball. Once you get this stack right here up to 1000, a gummy ball is launched out of the top of your gummy baller and will bounce around the field and give you a bunch of goo multipliers. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that you're going to want to aim the gummy baller at a huge island of marks or aim it towards a precise mark. When it hits a precise mark, though, it goes up by 30, which is gigantic compared to the very little amount that the gummy baller combo goes up by when it hits a regular mark or a regular honey mark. 
So pretty much you're going to want that gummy baller to smack into precise marks as often as you can. Now, launching the gummy baller willy-nilly all over the field is a terrible idea. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to aim the gummy baller using the chevron keys on your keyboard straight into the wall. The wall that is closest to the other side of the wall because it will bounce back and forth incredibly quickly rather than just letting it fly across the field into la la land. And now here comes one of the most annoying parts about boosting as a white hive, but with some practice, you'll get used to it. It's keeping a constant stack of 10x precision, which even I struggle with. So before starting your boost, you're going to want to stack up this thing, precision, up to 10 times. And throughout your entire boost, you're going to want to keep that precision at 10 times. I suggest refreshing it every 40 seconds because it lasts 60 seconds. 40 seconds is close enough. And yeah, over time, your, your brain will just automatically do it. You won't even have to think about it. Another thing I must mention is you want to set off your gummy baller as much as possible. So having two to three gumdrop people, what I mean by gumdrop people is like your friends in the game, you have one stand here, you have one stand over here, and they're both dropping gumdrops frequently, constantly throughout the whole boost, so that way your gummy baller here can collect it. See how it sucks up goo when I swing it? Look at that. All the goo goes away when I swing my uh, gummy baller because it's going into my gummy ball. To summarize, more goo, more gummy star. More gummy star, more honey. Because as a white hive, almost all of your honey comes from gummy stars. In fact, all of it really does, to be honest. And now we're going to talk about how to boost as a blue hive. Thanks to Jexify for this information. His channel will be linked in the description below. Okay, well, to start off, how to boost as a blue hive, you've got to kind of understand where most of your honey will come from. And most of your honey will come from balloons. So your goal as a blue hive is to get as big of a balloon as possible at your hive so you can convert it and get a load of honey from that balloon. You also do make a bit inside of the field, but it is not nearly as much as the balloon, so your main focus is going to be filling up balloons. Another thing is you should only boost in pine tree because every other field for blue really sucks because, well, capacity is a big deal as a blue hive because the more capacity you have, the more capacity your balloons have, and let's say something like Stumfield does not have nearly as much capacity as the pine tree forest due to the pine tree forest's countless capacity buffs that are given by amulets, bee quips, all the above, etc. Also, during beesmas, use snowflakes because snowflakes give you an extra capacity buff of 1.25. A big important part of boosting as a blue hive is having friends in the game with you. Having somebody with a bunch of fuzzy bees and tadpole bees in the field with you in like the pine tree forest can be super helpful because those bubbles do add onto your pop star. So when you have pop star active, your friend's bubbles will go into your pop star, making it easier to stack up to the max multiplier of 250. Having another friend back at the hives to watch your balloon at your hive to ensure that the growth of the balloon is actually increasing and you're not just losing pollen out of your balloon due to deflation. An easy way to pop bubbles is utilizing the tide popper. So let's say we want to pop into shift lock and then using the chevron keys to point yourself at the long side of the field so your tide popper can launch out its tidal waves to collect the bubbles. You watch this, I'm going to launch them and boom, they collect the bubbles. So you don't have to run as much to get to the other side of the field and your tidal waves will be able to reach more bubbles. Now, if you do have a double passive being pop star and star shower, your star showers will end up on the opposite side of the field, which will be like right here or here or even here or here. So it'll be one of those four quadrants. Only go for these three quadrants, the quadrant A, B, and C. Never go for quadrant D because quadrant D is inside the pine tree, this big fat pine tree that's going to block all the little green circles that you're supposed to walk into. So it's really useless to really go for a uh, star shower that's in the big pine tree here. So don't do that. One thing to keep in mind is to always stand underneath your balloons because if you're not standing Standing underneath your balloon, see how there's like a little uh, circle, I guess, underneath the balloon here. If you're not standing in these dark squares, your balloon will not be filling. So you're collecting pollen that just goes straight into your backpack and your capacity will fill a lot faster. So if you're under the balloons, your capacity will barely fill and your balloons will flood with pollen, which is the whole goal. The most balloon growth you'll see is during pop stars. Pop stars can be activated every 30th blue bomb token, by the way. So that's why you have a lot of buoyant bees in your hive. Anyways, so to grow your pop star, you're going to want to collect as many bubbles as possible. Collect them all the way up to 250 and then 
start collecting bomb tokens focusing on filling your balloons because when pop star is maxed out your blue multipliers are just off the charts and you'll be making a crap ton of blue pollen and it, in fact you'll probably run out of balloons in the field during your pop star which is a really good thing meaning all of your balloons are going back to the hive to be added onto your balloon however it can come at a cost of using a micro converter because your capacity will fill so fast so now when should you convert your balloon you should really only convert your balloon after every really gigantic splurge of balloons so whoever's watching your hive is like hey dude your balloon is huge and you realize wait a second there's a bunch of really big balloons going back to my hive so i'm going to go ahead and use a whirly gig to get back to the hive as quickly as possible because the whirly gig will teleport you and your bees back to the hive so that way you can convert your balloon before deflation takes effect and if your boost isn't done yet you can always go back to the field after converting at the hive so that's about it for blue hive boosting you're just going to want to focus on filling your balloons as much as possible getting fat pop stars and having as much capacity as possible again a big thanks to jexify for giving me the information needed to make this boost guide well for the blue segment of this video anyways now we're going to talk about how to boost as a red hive before we begin we're going to want to understand where most of your honey will be coming from most of your honey will be coming from scorching stars or well not from the scorching star directly but during the scorching star because the scorching star does not give you any actual honey it gives you a bunch of red multipliers and conversion links so you get honey during the scorching star you get more honey than you would without the scorching star does, does that make sense i hope it does okay now let's start so how do you activate your scorching star you activate your scorching star by getting 30 red boost tokens red boost tokens are often acquired through the target practice ability on the precise bee that's why you need a lot of precise bees so you activate target practice and do not touch the targets because once they go away boom look at that you got a bunch of red boost tokens so you can activate the scorching star quicker so simply just do not touch the targets now something that complicates this just a little bit that is keeping precision and collecting precise marks but we're going to first talk about keeping precision you're going to need to get a 10 times stack of precision during your red hive boost at all times do not lose it if you do lose it it's a hassle to get it back so before you start boosting i highly suggest that you get a 10 stack of precision so that way you're not running around wasting time during your super smoothie and all that you can get precision by hitting all three of the targets in target practice which i know that completely goes against the idea of not hitting your targets during target practice to activate a precise mark you've got to hit the purple circle the purple target see i'm going to stand right in it and boom hits just the purple target and gives me a beautiful precise mark which grants me super critical chance and critical chance so targets are going to be incredibly confusing when to hit them and when not to hit them a tip i have to sustain having a 10 times stack of precision would be to only hit all three targets and refresh your precision every 40 seconds not all the time just every 40 seconds you know now precise marks are going to be something hard to juggle there really is no perfect timing for precise marks you're just going to want to keep a constant three precise marks in the field at all times oh would you look at that i did it perfect <laughs> literally in like four seconds i got all three but yeah okay anyways now that you have your precision under control you've got your precise marks under control and you've activated your scorching star now let's talk about what to do during your scorching stars and how to build up your scorching stars okay so the basic mechanics of scorching star is when you're standing inside of flames your scorching star will grow but if you're standing in dark flames and this is where the dark side comes in your scorching star will grow by 33 percent more inside of dark flames than it would inside of regular flames so you're going to want to almost constantly be swinging your dark scythe at the flames so that way you can get a bunch of dark flames in the field although some people do like to time it some people like to just keep as many flames in the field as possible by timing it with their dark scythe so at the beginning they get a bunch of dark flames right throughout their scorching star they want to sort of time the flames perfectly what i mean by time the flames is that when you swing your dark scythe as a at a flame it completely refreshes the flames duration some people do like to wait until their flame is almost gone and then hit it with the dark scythe to refresh its entire lifespan so they get longer flames more flames in the field at the time and all that a quick tip i do have for growing your scorching stars is that when you activate x flame during a scorching star you're going to want to become a helicopter in shift lock or just running around in circles like this if you are on mobile pretty much you turn into a helicopter spin around as fast as possible during an x flame and get all the 
X flame around you and turn them all into dark flames. So just be swinging your dark side in circles like a helicopter, like about to take off like a whirly gig back to the hive, pretty much. Do most people know what whirly gigs actually do in real life or whirly gigs like, is that is that unheard of? I hope people even go outside anymore. Anyways, so after becoming a helicopter, you're gonna have a load of dark flames in there and you're gonna wanna just stand in them, cook up a scorching star to like eight to 10,000. And then you're gonna want to start activating your target practice targets. And I know there's more. I know it's crazy. There's a lot to do with the precise B, but you're going to want to activate some of your precise targets. When you activate a precise target and it gets shot, it collects a load of pollen. And I mean a crap ton. Though I do have one warning to give you. Do not always stand inside of the target ability when it gets shot, because when it gets shot, it converts your whole bag. That's pretty neat and all, but you're not going to want to do that during a Scorching Star, mainly because you lose all of your flame heat. All of it just goes straight out the window. And so that can be problematic during Scorching Stars. Sometimes it's okay to stand in them, but most of the time during a Scorching Star, you're going to want to avoid that. Although outside of Scorching Stars, you are going to sometimes want to stand inside of the target when it gets shot because you want to convert your entire bag because like, let's say you're having conversion issues because that does happen during boosts. Another thing I must mention is stay inside of your marks. Holy cow, I cannot stress this enough. If you are outside of your marks during a scorching star or during any time during a red boost, your honey gathering and your conversion will drop drastically. So you're going to want to constantly be standing inside of your marks here. See how I'm standing inside of my marks? The pollen buff will help you convert. I know that sounds a little bit strange, but it does help you convert. And also some of those honey marks help you convert. That precise mark ability. Okay, well, yeah, just stay inside of your marks unless there is a target that you really need to activate, like, really badly. You can leave it for a fraction of a second, but then jump right back into your marks. Just don't do it too often. I mean, really, that just just about wraps it up for red hive boosting i guess i hope you found this helpful and i'm sorry if some of this was a little inaccurate most of it should be very accurate though if you've got any red hive tips you'd like to share with us be sure to put those in the comments below and yeah happy red hive boosting hopefully this entire boost guide helped you a lot don't forget to leave a like and subscribe before you go and i post every saturday i'll see you all in the next one goodbye